This is Wellsville, my hometown. In a lot of ways, Wellsville is like most towns in America. The streets are safe. The mail almost arrives on time. And the ice cream man knows just how to beat the summer heat. But there's one thing about Wellsville you won't find in any other town. And it's something that makes us tremble in fear. It's a phone. A seemingly ordinary payphone that's been ringing for 27 years. Why doesn't someone answer it? Everybody has a theory. Hey, you get within five feet of that baby and whoosh, it's liquid brains. <laughs> Not me, Chief. I heard that when you answer it, you learn the exact day, hour, minute, and second that you die. Even the phone company was afraid to go near it. Uh, we're, we're not afraid, exactly. Phone regulations. It's a private call. The longer it rang, the less it seemed like anyone would ever answer it. But someone was about to try, and Wellsville would never be the same. the hottest, doggiest dog day of the summer. The kind of day you don't just stick to vinyl, you stick to everything. It was one of those days when all your summer dreams are burned out of your memory, like butt flesh on a superheated back seat. In some towns, they blame the heat and the humidity, but here in Wellsville, we factor in the mind-shattering sound of the ringing phone. It drove some people insane. Our mom, who has a metal plate in her head, had the hardest time of all. She says the ringing causes a sympathetic vibration in her skull. Honey, I'll get it. Hello? Yeah, I'm ready. Call me right back. To help her out, Dad fixed it so that when someone called, instead of the phone ringing, a different appliance would turn on. I've got it rigged to the stove alarm. Now watch it. Well, I guess there's a few bugs I need to work out, you know? <laughs> As for me, I was content to spend the rest of the summer on our cool basement floor. It wasn't exactly Thrillsville. But at least I wasn't outside. Green spotted horse fly. Five o'clock. It's going after Carl. Carl. You gotta get out of there. It's on me. It's biting. <laughs> Impervious to the summer heat, even Pete's superhero Artie couldn't pull their vacation out of the sinkhole. About the only two people still functioning in town were my mom and my best friend, Ellen, helping out at the Ringing Phone Crisis Center. Oh. Hello? There's a freak out on the corner of Douglas and Maple. Hurry! Got a book! What do we got, Hub? Looks like a 417. Good check it. Three 
answer the phone. Hello? Pete, there's a phone crisis at Patterson Field. Can you really use a volunteer? Uh, I'd like to, but I'm on to something. I can see this little half finger in the middle. Pete, your mom's on a call. It's really important. You're the only one I can turn to. It's life or death. I was on my way. The boredom. Make it stop. Kill us, Artie. Hurry. Soon you will be as cheese, boy. Melty, melty, melty. See bike. Shiny bike. Shiny bike. Go. Follow shiny bike. As I raced to the rescue, Pete and his friends followed me. The way a fish follows a lure. Hey kid! Over there. Is there anything else I can do? Well, we could really use some help at the center, but it's not always as glamorous. I want to help. Suddenly, I had a mission. And as it turned out, Pete had one, too. I got it. Mm -hmm. It'll save the summer and make us heroes. What are you talking about? What is it? We're going to answer the ringing phone. For 27 nerve-splintered years, Wellsville had wondered who would save them from the wrath of the ringing phone. Now we had our answer. There was Libby Hurley, who had mastered the Vulcan nerve pinch. Clem Linnell could hypnotize dogs. Nona Mecklenburg's speech patterns could cloud men's minds. Pete could produce seven kinds of body cheese. And then there was Artie, whose powers were endless. Oh, green pipe! I will destroy you yet! <laughs> Finally, there was Carl Hayden, who had the power of being a complete wuss. What's the matter? Can't move. Must be... Force field. How come I could get through, huh? Field must be attuned to my body frequency. Get real. You're pathetic, just so you know. They had lost Carl to the ringing phone. Maybe they'd even be better off without him. But as they marched on to their destiny, they couldn't help but wonder... Who would be next? For 27 years, the ringing phone had made our town a hostage to fear. While Pete and his friends tried to stop the insanity all at once, I was stopping it one person at a time. I'm sorry, sir. You'll have to speak up. Is that better? Much. Now, what were you saying? 
When will it stop? Hello? 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 Sir? Sometimes they're just looking for answers. What do you tell them? It's not like you know when it'll stop. We know when it started. May 15th, 1967. Look. But who was the call for? I mean, was somebody expecting it? They think so, but nobody knows who it was. What if you could find that person? Pete. Don't you see? That's the person the call was meant for. Maybe they're the person who has to answer it. It makes total sense. Pete, let's just get back to work, okay? Rookie. After we do it and we're famous, would you rather have your face on a postage stamp or on a license plate? Or you know one of those cereal bowls where you eat all your cereal and see a face? I want my face and some money. What are you doing, Hub? Saving you from a fate worse than death, that's what. Whose are they? They belong to a guy named Len Flang. Thought he could be a hero and answer the phone. That's all that's left to him. I can't go. Let me guess. A force field, right? Nope. Just chicken. Fair enough. See you later. When we're on a lunchbox. And then there were four. Five if you count Petunia. It's just a payphone, sir. Circuits, metal, and plastic. Why do you want to shoot it with a harpoon gun? I wanted to be a good volunteer, but I had to find out who the phone call was for so I could lift the curse forever. Hello, and thanks for calling the ringing phone hotline. I wonder if you'd help us with a little questionnaire. Question one. It was you, wasn't it? You're the one who didn't answer the phone. Confess! We're here to help people, not frighten them. I am trying to help. I'll tell you what. Why don't you take a lunch break? It's your first day here. Take it easy. But, Mom, I'm hot. I'm on to something. Lunch break. I had to stop the curse. A curse that left its brand of madness on everyone it touched. Pete and his friends tried to keep their spirits up, but the combination of heat and fear was beginning to take its toll. Hot. So hot. As for me, I was there, frustrated because I couldn't find the answers I was looking for. I tried to keep my cool, but the ringing phone was mocking me. Who have you come for? Who? Tell me! I'm not afraid of you! Maybe you should be. Stand back. I know that voice. You call the hotline. What are you doing? Don't be alarmed. I'm a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist? Maybe you can help me. Meanwhile, one last obstacle stood in the way of the magnificent four. Out of our way, gatekeeper. Sorry, Chief. I can't let you cross. This street's been declared a danger area. I call it a stovetop. It takes more than some hot asphalt to stop us. <laughs> but Nona was wrong. In fact, 
It took nothing more than hot asphalt to stop them in their tracks. Great! Now we're stranded! You'll have to go on without us. You can break the code of the crosswalk, Chief, but you can't break the laws of physics. That's what you think, crossboy! <laughs> Smart guys, what do you got to say for yourself now? Ah! It's over. Kaput! You curse you! At least we tried to save the town. Yeah. <laughs> hey! What do you want on your tombstone? Here lies Pete and Artie. They answered the call. Yeah! Ellen! Ellen! A psychiatrist, a Dr. Bert Looper. He drew up this whole psychiatric profile of the first passerby. Listen, listen. Probably filled with guilt. Feels the need to help out. Maybe here. Disturbed by the sound of ringing phones. Wow. Who could it be? I was about to find out. Ringing phone crisis center. Call me back, huh? And if this works, your mother will never have to worry about a phone ringing in this house again. Mom? Boy? Boy! Don't let it smell your fear! Too late. Go! Finally, Pete and Artie had come face to face with their dreaded foe. Your kind never learns, does it? No, Artie, don't do no. it. No! Please, boy. Stand back! This phone is going down, for I am Archie! <laughs> the strongest man! In the world. And then there was one. It's the last roundup, Cowboy Ed. Time for all good doggies to mosey on to bed. You giddy up now. I know, Mom. Know what, dear? It was you, wasn't it? The phone call. It was for you this whole time. Why didn't you answer it? Pete, I was younger than you. I, I was just walking by, and it started ringing, and... I thought it might be for me, but I was afraid. For 27 years? Yeah, well, I volunteer every day, and I've done everything I possibly can to help. Except answer it. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I gotta go. What's going on? Somebody's gonna answer the phone. Who? Your brother. Pete. Pete! It had all come down to this. Pete was as scared as he'd ever been. But as he felt the panic surge through his body, he finally understood the curse of the ringing phone. I'll get it. It wasn't about learning the moment of your death or liquefying your brains. The curse was living in fear, and that was something he couldn't live with anymore. Excuse me, train professional coming through. Excuse me. Joyce, what, what are you doing? Something I should have done 27 years ago. Pete! 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 Pete, no! Pete! Oh. 
blow? It's for you. Hello? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> this is kind of personal. Would you mind? For 27 years, Hub Callister had been reaching out to my mom. 27 years of waiting for one woman to answer his call. I've loved you since the seventh grade. I just couldn't bring myself to tell you in person. So I called you on the phone when we walked by one day. Hub. When you didn't answer, I just kept it ringing. I got this job to stay with it. I just hoped that someday you'd pick it up. Uh, Hub, I like you. But uh, I love my husband. You understand, don't you? After nearly three decades of fear, the curse was finally over. But as we were about to learn, the legend of the ringing phone would never end. Hub knew that mom would never pick up the phone, but it didn't really matter. To him, the rings were like an eternal flame. He kept lit by simply staying on the line. To this day, when we hear the rings, it reminds us that true love, if it's really true, doesn't need an answer. <laughs> <laughs>